Okay, so now we're gonna render out this simulation. The things we need to know about is how the alpha is gonna look and what colors we're gonna get. So all of this is gonna be generated with the output settings. So in this case, we have the very important one is which is bake. So bake means we're gonna actually get all the colors we've got in this input into the final texture. So we're gonna click that and see how that looks. So if we just do this. And it's created this. So you can see the actual texture itself has been basically the colors, have got the colors of what we had on the input. So that, that's if you click bake. But say that I want to not click bake and then do this out. You can say, see the say this time, the actual texture that's rendered out, rendered out is a black and white texture and the actual, but it's also given me a gradient. So now we can replace that gradient with whatever we want and that will give us the new colors. So if we had, and um, see if I've got any new colors. Yeah, there we go, a gradient, this blue one. You see now it's the same, same render, but the, the colors are all blue. So you can use that if you want to be able to make, use the same effect, but just basically change, change the, the colors and things, feel of it. The same kind of happens if, you, if you're using the input color, you actually, if you're not baking, you'll have actual ways to re, remap the coloring. So the other things I can show you, we'll, we'll leave these, these ones to later on. Lighting, if I, if I, let's go for maybe the input color one. And it's, you know, if we click on lighting, so now I'm gonna render this out, there should be, there, there'll be basically a normal map with light. So if I create a light source, so let's just create, I don't know, point light. And let's just increase the bump scale. And yes, the light has to be, oh, we've got the light on, here we go. So let's just increase the intensity and let's change it to a different color. So you can see it. Ah, yes, it's very um, We change the color of it. Let's make it like a little bluey light. Right, so let's increase uh, the bump, bump scales too, too much. But you can see it's got, it's basically reacting to light. It's got metal metalness. The, uh, so one of the things about this user, actually, we also have, I guess, I mean, it's hard to want to show you this. If you've got that, you've got the parallaxing. So if you, if we use the same thing as a height, we can actually use this to sort of to create a kind of more a kind of three-dimensional effect. There's also volumetric lighting, which is a, a currently in beta, but hopefully, <coughs> hopefully I will be able to sort of you know improve improve the performance of it and get it to a point where it's basically it's a shippable thing. I will show you that once it's done. So yeah, so basically a lot of the settings and things are all in here. You you can like for example like you can switch it to non-baked by clicking like that. Of course, and then the, you will want a gradient map to sort of look it up. So you can basically make all the changes here, but it's quite important sometimes to be using these settings when you're rendering it out so that you get the results you want. Other things you can, let's just show you some other, other features here. We've got the particle. <clears throat> if I switch it to fire blast again, so this time I'm going to actually make a, I'm going to use the density alpha and the particle when I create it here. So let's just turn off blending and record this. This time, this fire blast is actually, you'll see actually it won't be moving. It's got a, uh, we've got a tile value so we can actually see the whole thing if you were to play through it. But we, because it's set to being a particle, because it really, it's requiring a particle system. So let's create a particle system. And so now all of our, all of the things can be actually put into the part, a particle system just by simply making a renderer. You can see, where is it? Texture C animation here. So you can just put a grid, you know, put a number of pieces and just have it working through the normal texture sheet animation. But this this is gives actually more a bit more power because you can actually have to have it in the shader. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to just sort of change the speed of this, maybe change the lifetime to be oh wait, two and let's change it to be a sphere. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply that material we just made the five last material. So the fire blast, there we go. Yeah, I the fire blast, we wanted to actually put it to blend with one. And I don't want the speed to be itself. So is this actually, sorry, is this the actual one I did? Oh, it's not set to particle system. Okay, fine. 
So now this, this particle system, oh, this is the wrong one. It's five plus three, sorry, that's, that one's one I rendered another time. Let me just put it to five plus three, there we go. So this is system. Now you can see it wants to use the age percent UV zero z, 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 um, z dot z. So that, what that means is basically we're going to have special custom stream. So in the renderer, we want to basically add some custom data, custom vertex streams. So we can click on that and we're going to add from here, we're going to click on lifetime age percent. And you see it's in textures at zero Z. And that's now like mapping that to, you can see it's actually playing out the whole particle system from route through the lifetime of the particle. So if I speed that up now, you can see like, you know, if it was like square A, maybe I'd make the particle bigger. And make it less of them. So you can see that's how you can kind of add add these things to your particles to your particle system. So the so the other thing I wanted to show you is actually about what this this destiny density alpha is about. So with it clicked, what you're getting is the density is coming from from the through the alpha channel is actually being generated from the density. So if I click on here, you can see the alpha. This is this is the density of like of the fluid simulation. So if I didn't click this, you can see the gradient goes just to black there. If I record that out now, it's going to delete this for now. Oh yes, we're in particle. Let's just turn off particle so, so it's easier to see. I'm going to uh, yes, just do that. Play it. Okay, so here we can see now it actually it doesn't have any alpha on it. Now we could actually make the blend modes. We can change the destination to be one, for example, and that would basically be like an additive effect. But, but what, what if we wanted to have alpha in it, but we don't want to use the actual density to make the alpha. We actually want to define how the alpha channel works. So we might actually just change the gradient. So we could actually just go and put the alpha to zero and then maybe you don't want it to go to black. You want it to go to red. So let's say like that. And then I'll record, I'm going to record that out. So let's pause it, record, set record. Oh, you shouldn't have this in the thing. It's going to affect the actual record. But yeah, well, there you go. So you see now it's actually fading to red and and the alpha has been completely controlled by us so that is another way that you can kind of really kind of get specific control of like how you want your final like render to look